Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome to a new skincare try-on that I think might have a little bit of controversy to it. Here's the game plan. I bought a few K-Beauty products. I'm gonna give you my update on the Medicube Booster Pro, and then I got some PR of Sephora brands, and before the sale ends, I thought it might be helpful if I give you some comparisons with these products. I feel like comparisons are so helpful for, uh, you know, really getting an idea of how a product works. It's one thing to try to explain it with words, but I almost feel like, you know, we're so limited with words. We have timestamps and links in the description box below as always, if you would like to jump around and, oh my gosh, oh, oh. What is going on with this PIE? Do you see this trickery my lights are doing? <laughs> Sometimes I get accused of using filters. I don't know how to use filters. I do have studio lighting and it's a real mixed bag. Studio lighting is such a mixed bag. It highlights every little flyaway that I have. <laughs> Here, let me turn them off. Oh, I got so much stuff in front of me. Let me turn them off and show you what I'm talking about. So these are the studio lights. Do you see how our quality just instantly dropped? Bring the lights back. And now the quality is better, but you also have trickery based on where the light is hitting my face. Anyway, let's get into today's video. I'm really quickly hoping to finish this off quite soon. This isn't, it's not great. It's the Vici. <laughs> I'm so blunt sometimes. It's the Vici Mineral Micellar Water. I'm just hoping to finish it because I bought the Toradin Cleansing Water. I'm doing this kind of quick cleanse because I used my Chogongjin moisturizer last night, which is a little heavy. I'm trying to do a new one for April, but I started on the 10% Niacinamide Serum and my skin did not seem to like that, which I shouldn't be surprised at. I feel like I always struggle with those high niacinamide percentage products. It's so funny because I can use, you know, lower niacinamide percentages, but the second you start cranking it up to these high levels where we still don't have published data on how they work, that's when I do start breaking out. So let's try on this new Purito Wonder Relief Centella Serum Unscented. Purito has revamped their entire line, but I think this is the one that might have the most controversy at this point. <laughs> Purito made a post to Instagram about this and I'll, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen for you. So they say, we relaunched our existing Purito Centella line as the Wonder Relief line. While our serum was a much loved product, we worked hard to upgrade it for you. And then they talk about how Korean labeling laws are changing and this is, this is huge. My friends, this is huge. During the product development process, Korean laws around labeling skincare ingredients changed from labeling compound extract to solely labeling active ingredient extract. Based on our firm principle and belief in disclosing accurate and transparent information to our community, we would love to be the first Korean skincare brand to disclose the amount of active ingredient extract. While the new labeling puts Centella Asiatica a little further down in the ingredients list, we've upgraded the serum to contain 34,860 parts per million, that is 3.48% real easy conversion, which is more than double the amount before. Purito will continue to think only about our customers and will not slow down our efforts and passion to make good products for you. In case you don't follow what's going on here. So the old Purito Centella Unscented Serum contained supposedly 49% Centella Asiatica extract. And with this disclosure, we are now finding out more about what that meant in that product. So that was a compound extract, 49% of a compound extract, meaning Centella Asiatica, the plant, plus whatever else goes into the extract. Remember, an extract is never 100% of a plant. It just can't possibly be. So yes, that 49% actually meant 1.5% uh, of Centella Asiatica. Now, I did see some people express frustration with Purito over this. They're saying, oh, okay, you are saying, look at how much we are uh, disclosing and giving you full transparency, but you said for years, is that your old serum was 49% Centella Asiatica and now you're saying it's 1.6. And I am happy for this change, just so you know, 
uh, if I understand correctly, it's up to six months to change this on new products and two years on old products. So here, the Anua 77% heart leaf toner, they can say this for two more years, but eventually they're going to have to say how much actual heart leaf is in this product. And it's not going to be 77% because that 77% refers to the extract. Skin 104 is Centella Ampoule. Best example I can think of. That is not 100% Centella Asiatica plant, now is it? Is all of this making sense? No, you know what? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna not just talk about it, I'm gonna show you what I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any Centella Asiatica, but I do have some spinach. This is 100% spinach. You can eat it if you want to, but let's use it as a skincare product. The things I do for the sake of teaching. That's how you know I have worked as a teacher. We want you to learn. <laughs> See how it doesn't work? And even if you were to mix this 50-50, so it was 50% uh, spinach, do you realize how lightweight this is? The amount of water that would equal 50% is so <laughs> minuscule that I would pretty much still have that problem with 50% spinach extract. So you're never going to get these high levels of plant extract because how would it stick to your face, much less how would it absorb into your skin. So you actually want these extracts and you don't want them at high percentages. So I guess this is all to say, I, I don't think that criticizing Purito makes a lot of sense to me. I'm already talking about a brand that some of you don't buy from and that's okay, I'm not here to change your mind. But for me, this was more of, oh, well that makes perfect sense. It's nice to see a brand finally sharing this and again, in time, they're all going to have to. Purito seems to be willing to go first, even if that means they'll deal with criticism. But they're right, they actually are being transparent. Better late than never, though. I, I understand both the, uh, the pros and the cons here. But let's apply this product because I am going to use this followed by my Booster Pro, which I feel also has its own controversy, and I love talking about controversy. <laughs> And the funny thing to me about focusing on the Centella Asiatica extract anyway is that in my personal opinion it doesn't tell you anywhere near as much as when you see these brands separate out those active Sika constituents. Medecasoside, Asiatica side, Medecasic acid, Asiatic acid, I, I care more about those. We know that those are the components in Centella that seem to contribute to that repair process. So for me, that's the important information. It's, it's really, it's not even the extract, but it's those special compounds that are contained in the plant that really excite me. That's what I would actually like to see disclosure of. That's what I care about. This is what's so funny about me trying new K-Beauty products is I feel that sometimes I'm out of the loop. I didn't even know that this Axis Y Vegan Collagen Eye Serum was a brand new release, but oh my gosh, I love it so much. I already bought a backup of this. I love it. This pump packaging, brilliant. There is one con though. This is, uh, 0.33 fluid ounces. I guess that's not too small. I'm so glad YesStyle sent me this though because I had just finished, it'll be in my next empties, I finished a fresh black tea eye serum and I'm almost out of my favorite Dr. Dennis Gross eye serum. I no longer feel like I have to repurchase that. This is, this is so good. <laughs> so now I can use the MediQ Booster Pro. Do you all want to see how you can go from looking sophisticated with the device to looking goofy? Look at this. I just look excessive now, but <laughs> this is absolutely what I do in the morning. Are you kidding me? Who has time? Who has time? <laughs> we can talk about all this in just a moment here. Let me finish up. I do not do the full routine with this. I just kind of use it for maybe one to two. Well, I guess three minutes because I let this one uh, tell me it's done. <laughs> I have no idea if I can really show this on camera, but yes, the Pro is supposed to be stronger and 
uh, increase the penetration of your skin care ingredients even more than the Booster original. And I feel it does, but that's kind of where the controversy comes from. On Medicube's Instagram posts, I saw a lot of people saying they were very upset that Medicube released this because they had just bought either this or the air shot, and here's the Booster Pro proclaiming to be a six-in-one device. I wanted to say, I feel like there's a few things to know here. One is that this is always gonna happen with tech. I've seen it happen with the Zip. I saw a lot of people really frustrated that they bought the Zip GX, and then the Halo came out for less money. It's just how it goes, though. This happens with iPhones, right? At the same time, at the same time, I really do feel that Medicube US should have made this information a little bit more out there. They should have let people know, hey, this device is coming, and it's at the very least a two-in-one. It's the AirShot and the Booster H. They did offer people, I think they were offering them $40 to $45 to return their old booster in exchange for this. Don't do that. Don't do that. This is worth so much more than $40, $45. At the very least, gift this to somebody. This is still a really good device and the air shot. But is this better? Yeah, I, I do. I do think it's better. Now, here's where I kind of differ a bit in some of my opinions on this. The microcurrent mode as well as the EMS shot mode to me are okay. <laughs> Those modes didn't replace my zip, which I talked about there, nor my, uh, the original HR. I still think that that is more powerful than the EMS in this device. Which is funny because I do think the booster mode is improved in this. Uh, they also say that it has sonic vibrations, so that's what happened to my favorite little blue hedgehog. Do with that what you will, it's kind of uh, very hard to uh, look at published literature on Sonic Vibrations and Sonic the Hedgehog, actually. And then they say it has LED, but as I've talked about a lot with LED, you're moving it around. It's very hard to say how much of a real LED treatment you are getting with this device. Instead, I would say it's kind of more of a, a, an additional add-on. So my thoughts on this, I absolutely love it, but that was pretty predictable because I loved the original. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but this also feels nicer in your hand. It's kind of bizarre. The booster as well as the air shot are both kind of really light and just kind of plasticky feeling. This feels better. It's, it's bizarre because the Ajar and the Ucera both feel really hefty and luxe in your hand. These never did. So this is an upgrade in every sense. I do feel bad for people who didn't know this was coming. I didn't know it was coming. That's why I bought this. <laughs> I feel like I see better results from any skincare products that I pair this with, which is why I have to be cautious not to use this with active ingredients, but with these peptide-rich humectant formulas, I feel I see more from them. That said, I will always be honest with you. You know, we don't have a lot of published literature about this. It could be a placebo effect. It could be these things, and yet I, I, I'd buy it again. I would buy it again. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. I want to use the Pharmacy Honey Milk Hydrating Essence. And this is a new release. I saw, again, I saw a reviewer uh, comparing this to the Tier Tier Milk Skin Toner. So let's do that today. Let's see how these compare. Oh, it would be fun if we do half and half, wouldn't it? Oh, by the way, this is my gripe with this. Look at that. It's hard to get it, hard to get it out of the packaging. This is such a constant problem these days. I feel like nobody is testing the final product in the final packaging. They're probably, one of you pointed this out, they're probably uh, using our generic uh, uh, test packaging, you know, just white packaging with numbers on it. That's how they test the product. Then they bottle it up and sell it. But a lot of times the bottle has a flaw and this opening is too small for how viscous this product is. I just don't understand it. Y'all gotta do better with this. So anyway, it's kind of everywhere here. Let's do the tier tier. Has a better opening. Well, it looks to me like the tier tier is a bit thicker, but yes, yeah, same general principle of a milky toner. The real test will be in trying this on. So here's the pharmacy honey milk side. And then tier tier. 
I don't feel like they're the same product. They definitely have different ingredients, but if you are looking for hydration with a bit of moisturizing properties, both of these are going to give you that. Yeah, uh, you know, this is just really demonstrating that you don't need every new skincare release. You know, they're all gonna get hype from influencers and from the brand themselves, but you don't need everything. This is how you end up with repetition in a routine. These are different ingredients, but still giving you similar properties in terms of what they do for your skin. So to the person who said they felt like the pharmacy was similar to the tier tier, I definitely see it. I definitely see it. <laughs> I think our next product is probably going to be a little bit more different, this comparison. So the Alpen Instant Bright Eye Peptide and Niacinamide Moisturizer, this one sold out. This sold out quickly, and I'm not really surprised. Alpen found their place. A lot of people have become big fans of the brand. Now, this is a, a tinted eye cream, which I do like, but look at the tint on this. It's a little bit of a color corrector. And I saw someone on Reddit ask how that compares to the In Beauty Bright and Tight, so let's put that next to it. This is probably gonna pump out a little funny because I haven't used this in a while. Yeah, I definitely got one of those uh, uh, lumps in it. <laughs> Do you all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so there is the In Beauty, and you can see how that's kind of more of a concealer shade. These are both eye creams, so they're not going to be a replacement for concealer, but I, I, I do like I do like this category. <laughs> but let's try these on. I'm going to grab my, uh, once again being extra, my skincare brushes for this. These are eye treatment brushes. The first time I ever applied the Alpen, I actually thought it was going to be like the Live Tinted for me, where it was just a little too dark, but I am really impressed. They actually got a perfect color that doesn't seem to be too deep, and yet it this might work for all skin tones. Did they do it? And then I also am very impressed with the ingredients, but of course I love peptides. Of course I do. And niacinamide at lower percentages. I'm gonna use just a little bit more so I can try to demonstrate that color better. Obviously you don't need to go overboard with this product category. Alpen is so good at textures. I, I don't know how they do it. This is such a, a cosmetically elegant, beautiful texture. But let's do the In Beauty on the other eye here. I actually don't love this eye cream because I find it to be a little bit too thick and a little bit too uh, not moisturizing enough. I want my eye cream to be more moisturizing. This really feels more like if you took a concealer and mixed eye cream into it. Whereas the Alpen feels like an eye cream with some color correcting pigments in it. Can you see that I'm now having to blend this out really far on my face because it is thick. <laughs> so there we go. I already told you my thoughts on these. I do feel that the Alpen is more moisturizing. And uh, again, the In Beauty is, is just like if you took an eye cream and mixed it with a concealer. It's not enough moisture for me personally. Sometimes, sometimes I can pull it off, but in my In Beauty review when I tried to switch to this, my under eye area was getting dry. <laughs> This is ironic, and I didn't even catch this until right now, but uh, In Beauty, who we just talked about their eye cream, has released this new Extreme Cream. I am actually surprised more people aren't talking about this because as somebody who does appreciate textures, this is gorgeous. I don't understand what it is that's so... Uh, I, I think what it is about this is that it feels like it has a lot of oils in it. So it's a really glowy product on your skin. Can you see that? It, it does have a lot of oils, by the way. Oh, I love this texture so much. It's gonna make me look a little shiny, but I, I love this texture. But you know, I feel like I've been going off about good moisturizers lately. There's kind of a lot of them. So let's compare that to the Bioma, which I would say is very different from that. This is more of a standard moisturizer in how it spreads more of a, a medium weight moisturizer. Do you see the shine difference here? Can you see that? Uh, I seem to have more light shining on this side of my face, so we'll have to take that into account. But let's put the In Beauty on this side. And it's also a gorgeous formula. Bisabolol, peptides, those reparative peptides, ceramide ingredients, 
Uh, great release. Great release in beauty, and it's even got a refill system. A little bit of a mixed bag on the refill system because I don't think these are as eco-conscious as the idea of refillable packaging sounds like it would be, but I guess it's a step in the right direction, and I do think it's nice packaging. So I don't want to criticize too much, you know? Let's do the Bioma on the other side. And again, keeping in mind that for some reason it just looks like there's more light on this side of my face. No, you can still see. You can see this side is a lot more glowy. See, I think what it is is as somebody who likes to mix oils into my moisturizer, this In Beauty product takes that step out for me because it's already got the oils so beautifully mixed into it. I really like that In Beauty moisturizer. Again, I'm raving about a lot of moisturizers lately. You don't need all of them. Just, you know, try to ask yourself what it is you're looking for in a moisturizer and decide from there. Don't just go based on hype. Go on what you are looking for. I bought a new sun stick from Haru Haru Wonder. The Black Bamboo Daily Soothing Sun Shield, unscented, SPF 50 plus, PA 4 plus. Normally, I don't like to use a sun stick as uh, my, my base layer of sunscreen because it's very hard to apply enough of a sun stick. I usually use these for touch-ups, but we are going to try it today. I'm just going to really go ham with this sun stick, apply it heavily. Wow. <laughs> this one glides really nicely. At the same time, there's a part of me that's wondering if it's just because of the oils in that In Beauty cream. Well, we got another, oh, yeah, look, look at that, it is. <laughs> this is how subtle differences in your products can really make a big difference. They, they really can. But I will say, I noticed that this was gliding beautifully on my skin. Look at this, I'm doing a gua sha treatment with my sun stick. <laughs> you know, I feel like I've been pretty picky with a lot of the sun sticks I've tried. I've really only loved a, a, a handful of them. So many of them do not glide. Sorry, Beauty of Joe Sun. <laughs> Yours has to be the absolute worst for gliding properties. But uh, this is nice. This is really comparing to my current favorite, which is Eason Trees. And nice ingredients as well. You see this does not have Tinnosorb M. I double checked that multiple times. It does not have Tinnosorb M in it, so you see absolutely no white cast. Uh, Fragrance-free formula. Y'all, I gotta stop. <laughs> I'm actually having a lot of fun applying this because of how beautifully it glides. I think we got enough on. And furthermore, that evened out my, uh, my glow factor because, in my opinion, all Korean sunscreens have a little bit of a dewiness factor to them. If you don't want that, I genuinely think the best matte sunscreens are J-Beauty. Is it just me or was this an extra fun video with the comparisons? We should do this more often. Okay, so our final comparison is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Hue Drops. Let's do this against the Drunk Elephant Debronzy. However, I'm just going to tell you now, I'm not actually going to use Debronzy because it is that different. These are very minimally close to each other in my opinion. Okay, so here's the Glow Recipe and then here's the Drunk Elephant. Let me show you what happens when I blend these out. Glow recipe. Drunk elephant. So when I blend them even more, you can actually see that the drunk elephant really leaves a lot of a tint behind, whereas the uh, glow recipe is just a, a barely there. Also, this one kind of sinks into your skin. This one is a little slower to absorb. I do actually like this product as a primer. That's why I'm using it in the primer step. I, I feel like that's where I uh, messed up all along. I thought that this was strictly a serum and I actually really like it as a primer. Yeah, I really thought I was gonna hate this. I really thought this was gonna be a lot like the Drunk Elephant, but it, it works for me, which is very surprising. <laughs> And my friends, that's it for today's video. I feel like this was so fun. Was this fun? We should do more comparisons for sure. I feel like these two were absolutely the closest, whereas we saw a lot of differences with this versus Drunk Elephant, the In Beauty versus the Bioma, the Alpen versus the Bright and Tight. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.